All right, I want to take you back out to New York. These are live pictures outside of a federal courthouse in Manhattan where Democratic New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez and his wife, Nadine, are facing a judge for the first time since the indictment last week. Menendez was indicted Friday on allegations. He and his wife accepted bribes from a group of New Jersey businessmen on behalf of interests in Egypt, totaling more than $600,000. The FBI found about $500,000 in cash and more than $100,000 in gold bars at his home in a raid last year. Menendez denies any wrongdoing, and he says the envelopes of cash were legitimate personal savings. All week, Menendez has ignored calls to resign. He says he will be exonerated when all the facts are presented and accused prosecutors of characterizing certain facts to make them, quote, more salacious or as salacious as possible. Joining me now, former federal prosecutor Pat Brady to talk about the case. And again, Senator Menendez uh, will be appearing in federal court. No cameras in federal court at any moment, but we're monitoring that. Uh, sir, thank you for your time. Gobs of cash, not just stuffed in envelopes, but in his jacket pockets that was laid out in the indictment, these gold bars. He calls, says, call me old fashioned. This is my money. It doesn't pass the smell test in the court of public opinion, but does it in a court of law? No, absolutely not. They found him with cash and gold in his house. Nobody keeps cash anymore. In any case I've ever seen where there's cash in the house of this amount, there, there's no explanation plus his explanation for it, which he probably should have kept quiet on is that he's from originally from Kara's family is originally from Cuba and they used to seize money. It made no sense. There, that evident, cash in the house like that, stuffed in the pockets with gold bars, that's about as good evidence as you're going to get in a criminal white collar prosecution. So not only that, but the DNA in this case, which the prosecution oh. says they have, that links fingerprints to the businessman he's linked to on the envelopes of cash. How damning is that? Terribly damning, along with the text that coincided. It's a circumstantial case in that there's no admission so far, at least is what we see in the indictment. And people admitted they were doing it, but the, the, the timeline, the circumstantial text, the money, the DNA, uh, the, the, the meetings that can be verified. And again, prosecutors only put about 25, 30 percent of their case in their indictment. This is only just the tip of the iceberg, the evidence they have against them. And this is overwhelming evidence if they can prove up what they've alleged. So let's go through a, a few of these charges. One, conspiracy to commit bribery, fraud, extortion. Of those, which is the most serious? No, they're all serious. Uh, they're, they're all ser e equally serious. I think they're all 20-year felonies. I mean, if he get, is convicted on this, he's looking at some jail time. You can't look at the statutory amount. You have to look at the sentencing guideline for guidance on where it's going to be. But th th this is probably a four- to five-year kind of uh, sentence he might be looking at, but definitely a jail time. And this is a second, even though he was acquitted before, uh, he's very familiar with the criminal justice system, which just dumbfounds me that he would do this again after being so fortunate last time to get out of it. The other thing I found interesting, Pat, was prosecutors filed a forfeiture claim. Express, explain the reason for that. Yeah, and, and that, they typically do that in a white collar case. Forfeiture basically is you can, the government can get back the quote unquote proceeds of the crime. So this money that they found that were proceeds of the crime, that, that comes back to the government. That can really be um, a hit for a defendant uh, to, to do that. But it, it goes unnoticed, but that's a good catch, Marty, because that's a very big part of what might be plea negotiations down the road. Right, these gold bars, somebody wants their hands on them. Um, they've already got DNA, so his defense. Just have to say, wipe the DNA off next right. time. Wipe the DNA. They have their evidence. They laid it out in a nearly Can 40 Can you imagine the United indictment. States Senator sitting in his house wiping off gold bars to get rid of the prints? I mean, that's this reads like something out of The Sopranos. I'm sitting here in Chicago. We're kind of used to this. But this one is, is really a doozy. Right, back in the mob days. I mean, the stuffing hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash in jacket pockets and sleeves, right? I mean, the images tell the story. Uh, but his defense will come up with as strong of a defense as they can. How do you expect they, um, they try to get him out of it? Good luck with that one. This is a lot of evidence in here, and he can't really probably testify. I mean, he has a right not to testify, but typically, if they think they can get out of it, they'll testify. But what story is he going to tell? I just don't see any viable explanation given the timing of the acts he's alleged to have committed on behalf of these Egyptians and some of the interference he tried to do in some of these criminal cases. It looks like a rock solid case. I mean, there's always a defense and the courthouse door is always open, but good luck with this one. This looks like a pretty strong case. That's probably why you're seeing so many calls for him to step down.
yet we're not seeing it from every senator on the Democratic side at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting what happens today, uh, one that we'll follow closely. Pat, nice to see you. Thank you. Marty, good to see you again, buddy. Take All care. Right. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.